Hello and welcome to this video. You might have seen in one of my recent videos I was reviewing the excellent OEX Fox 2 V2. You can click on this link up here to look at that video. But what I'd really like to do is see how this £80 tent compares to something a little bit further up in the budget range, something about five or six times the cost. And ah, it appears someone has carelessly left a Terra Nova Southern Cross 1 tent on the floor here. Let's see if we can compare these two tents. You'll have to excuse my sunglasses in this video. It's just a really bright sunny day here in Somerset today, although the cloud has just come over for a second now. So what I'm going to do is get this tent pitched and because it's green, I can only assume that sprinkling a bit of water on it should make it grow. Let's give it a go. Maybe we need a little bit more. There we go. There's the Terra Nova Southern Cross 1 pitched, and now we can compare it to the OEX Fox 2 V2. So we now have the Southern Cross 1 and the Fox 2 side by side, so we can have a look at what's similar, what's different, and what maybe makes this five times the price of the OEX. The first observation would have to be that they are a similar size, generally speaking. Neither one is majorly low or majorly tall, the Terra Nova is very slightly taller than the, the Fox 2, but it's only by about 10 centimetres, and I'll compare the two heights on the screen now. Also, looking at the two tents, I can see that the Southern Cross 1 is a little bit narrower than the Fox 2. I'll put the widths of the two tents up here as well now, so you can compare. But having that slightly smaller footprint means that it's easier to get into a smaller pitch space. So it might be that there's only a small amount of flat and level ground, or it might be that there's a cliff edge off to one side, or maybe you've got rocks to consider, or maybe there are lumps and bumps and thistles, who knows. The smaller the footprint is, the easier it is going to be to find yourself a pitch for the night. Of course, the trade-off with having less width is that you don't have as much space on the inside of the tent. So the Fox 2 has a second vestibule. It also has a lot more width on the inside of the tent. And there are trade-offs throughout this comparison. Stability is one area where the Southern Cross 1 really wins out for me. You can see that the Fox 2 is blowing around a little bit here in this breeze, whereas the Terra Nova is absolutely rock solid and I haven't even put the guy lines out. So there are four guy lines to put out yet on the Southern Cross 1 and I also haven't pegged down the, the two ends of the main hoop that goes from side to side across the tent. Even so, that tent is sitting there absolutely solid at the moment. And that stability is really good for two reasons. It means it's going to be able to take higher winds. It also means it's going to be quieter in the night. That tent is the quietest tent I have when it comes to wind in the night. It's not flapping around. My Hilleberg Solo tends to flap its top hat. Um, you can see that this tent does move a bit as well, which it did on my Dartmoor camp. So for peace and quiet and a better sleep, it's really good to have a tent that just sits there like a rock. Bringing you around this side, you can see that we have one lateral pole that goes from side to side on the Terra Nova, and then one longitudinal pole that spans from end to end. So we get a nice stable tent, and this is a fully freestanding tent. So if I took my pegs out, I could pick up the whole tent and move it anywhere I wanted. The Fox 2 has one pole at this end, one pole at that end, and then everything else is taken care of with the pegs. So the Fox 2 is inherently less stable than the Southern Cross, and it relies on its pegs a bit more to keep it rigid and keep it supported end to end and from side to side. This probably won't be a big deal to a lot of people, and once the Fox 2 is pegged out, it can definitely withstand some wind. As I've already mentioned, the Southern Cross only has one door. It's accessed via the storm flap, which is held shut by two Velcro pads. The door then clips up onto the top pole and is secured out of the way. The Southern Cross 1 vestibule in my eyes is absolutely perfect. It's no bigger and no smaller than it needs to be. I can get my rucksack tucked out of the way up here. I can have all my cooking equipment and my shoes here. It just works. I don't want my tent to be bigger than it needs to be because it'll take up too much space and weight in my pack, but I also don't want it to be too small and make me feel cramped. 
that's one area where I feel Fox 2 is a compromise for me and for my requirements because it's a bit bigger than I need it to be and it's 400 grams heavier than this tent which is just unnecessary for me. But that brings me on to another point. Absolutely everyone has their own set of requirements when it comes to a tent. It might be the cost, it might be the weight, it might be the pack size, it might be the length of the tent if you're very tall, maybe it's the height of the tent if you're very tall or maybe you have back issues that mean you really need to be able to sit up straight properly. I have my own personal bugbear so I don't like tents that don't have a second zip at the top of the door which allows you to just unzip and peer out of the door to look at the weather or maybe check out the sunrise in the morning. I also don't love tents that can't be pitched with the inner and outer together. For me that's a bit of a deal breaker personally but for a lot of people they just don't care. They don't mind getting a few drops of rain on the inner while they throw the fly sheet over. It's really down to personal choice. And there are so many tents on the market you can buy a Fox 2 like this for £80. It also has a smaller brother, the Fox 1, which costs you £49 at the moment from Go Outdoors. Or you can go up to around about £400 for the Terra Nova over there. You can buy a Hilleberg Solo for £900 and there are tents that cost even more than that if you want to go for ultra lightweight, ultra strong stuff that can take any conditions you throw at it. It's really up to you, it doesn't matter what anyone else is doing, buy the tent that does the job for you. It's that simple. I released a video a couple of weeks ago where I reviewed the Fox 2 on its own and I timed how long it took me to pitch it. Here is the time for that pitching and I also reviewed the Southern Cross 1 a few months back where I was comparing three of my tents with each other and here is how long it took me to pitch the Southern Cross 1. So you can see that it's significantly quicker to pitch the Southern Cross 1. I would count that against the Fox 2 because it seemed to take forever for me to pitch that on Dartmoor and that one time I used it we were only talking a handful of minutes but it, it just seemed a bit fiddly compared to the Southern Cross 1. It really is a very quick tent to pitch. Now in a comparison video like this, when it comes to materials, I would expect to be saying that the materials used in the Fox 2 are of a poor quality, but they're actually really good. You get a 4,000mm hydrostatic head rating on the ground sheet of the Fox 2 and 5,000mm rating on the fly sheet. You get that same 5,000mm rating on the fly sheet on the Southern Cross 1, but it's a 10,000mm rating on the ground sheet, which is really good. 4,000mm should be absolutely fine to keep you dry, so I don't really see that that's a major weakness of the Fox 2. So I've pointed out a bunch of differences to you there, and it's really up to you to decide what's important to you when it comes to buying a tent. Is it cost? Is it weight? Is it height on the inside? Is it how many zips you have on the door? Maybe you don't like the guy line material? There are so many tents to choose from out there. You've got the likes of OEX and Terra Nova. You've got Nature Hike, MSR, Hilleberg. You've got 3FUL. There's just a massive array of tents out there for you to choose from. So it's really up to you. You can go for a sub one kilogram lightweight tent. You can go for a three kilogram three man tent that's gonna give you all the space you could wish for. And if there are two of you, maybe you could divide the tent up so one has the inner, one has the outer, split the poles and the pegs, and then suddenly that three kilogram weight tag might not be of too big a concern to you. For me, it's really important to have a small pack size and to have as little weight on my back as I can. So for a four season tent, 1.7 kilograms is really good. I've actually just purchased something else which is going to significantly reduce my weight for the summer. You might have seen that I recently bought a, a very lightweight quilt which is under 500 grams. Click on a link up here to see my review of that. It's the Cumulus Quilt 250. Something like the Fox 2 I cannot recommend enough if you're very new to wild camping or if you just want to give it a go and you're not sure if you want to invest. Personally I think it's really important to research and try to buy once if you can. The second hand market is still really strong so if you're just deciding to try wild camping get yourself an 80 quid fox, see if you like it. If you don't, you can easily sell it for at least 50 quid, I would say. But then if you have more disposable income, perhaps you could try something like the Terra Nova here. It's 400 pounds and you can probably sell it for at least 350. So if you don't get on with camping, you're not going to lose that much money if you decide to give it all up and sell your equipment. This is exactly the approach I employed when I bought my Hilleberg Solo. It was second hand on Facebook Marketplace for £700, including the footprint. It had never been pitched outdoors, so it was essentially brand new. And those tents are now selling for in excess of £800 second hand. So although it's a big outlay initially, you're not necessarily 
throwing away seven or eight hundred pounds or four hundred pounds or eighty pounds because if you don't like it if you want to move it on then you don't have to consider a massive drop in value when you come to sell it. So I hope that gives you some food for thought. Please ask me about either of these tents or any of my other tents in my comparison videos. I still have all of those tents. I currently am holding on to the Fox 2, but I don't know how much longer I'm going to have it. I did just buy it to fill a gap while my Terra Nova was being repaired. Um, I don't see that it really gives me anything more from camping that I want. So maybe that'll be up for sale in the near future. Who knows? I'll let you all know if that's the case. So thank you for watching. I hope this video has helped a little bit. If you have any comments or questions, just drop them down below and I'll see you on the next video. Can you get through okay? How are you doing, alright? Yeah, are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Are you camping or just...? Uh, no, I was just doing a video. I've got no sleeping bags or anything. I've just finished now. Right, no Is this your field? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Am I okay doing this? Yeah, of course, yeah. Okay, I thought I was near the coast path, but... Oh, that's today, isn't it? Oh, is that where you're going? No, we've been watching them, but they're so far away. Oh, uh, it's not worth all the hassle to get into Western, is it? No, you can just see them, but not a lot. Uh, oh, well, thanks. I'll be gone in a sec. What are you filming? Uh, it's just a tent review comparing two different tents. Oh, okay. Not very interesting if you don't like tents. <laughs> see you later. Thanks, bye. <laughs>